one thing a lot of believers are struggling with is when God delays answers. When you are in a situation and you don't know what to do, or when things seem uncertain, you want answers, you want to know what's going on. And if things, something's up, you want to know what your part is, what you are doing wrong. And you want to know what to do about it, and you want to learn from it so that, you won't, so that the situation won't repeat itself in a similar manner. Well, the situation itself cannot repeat itself, but you get what I'm saying. You know, you don't want similar things to happen again, especially if it involves danger or whatever. You get, you get what I'm saying here? We all have been there. Unbelievers are there often. Atheists are there. Even though they claim they don't care, they do. Now, wouldn't it be better if God would just roll out um, documents from the heavens transported by angelic beings into our mailboxes? Or wouldn't it be better if Christ would just make an email account and mail all the answers to us, to our smartphone? Wouldn't that be great? Many people think, yeah, that would be great. Then we won't have to go through all that strife and through all of that. We will just know what's going on. Now, let me tell you, that will not be great. It won't be great at all. It won't be beneficial to you the least. Now, let me explain to you why. Let me explain to you why God withholds answers. You know why? It's not because he has some selfish interest, because what kind of selfish interest can he have? He doesn't need anyone or anything to exist. It's not because he wants to exploit you or punish you or any of that. Well, Christ fulfilled it all, so this whole idea that God is out to get you, please, get the darkness out of your thinking, please, get it out. Why is God withholding answers? He's not playing a game on you like some people do here with other people. No, it's not because God is afraid of if something comes out. What the heck can he be afraid of? Come on, no. He withholds answers because he knows that in your state of being right now, you would begin to rely on those answers and those answers would become gods unto you. Those answers would become idols to you. You would become attached to those answers. And once you get attached to those answers, you've lost perspective. You are distracted. So you're not walking by faith anymore. That's why he withholds answers. God withholds answers for your sake. Look, as parents, I'm not going to say as a parent because I'm not a parent at the moment. Remember, I'm quite young still, now that I'm recording this. But parents and also some older pe people, sorry, some if teenagers, when something tragic happens, they conceal it from the younger ones, from children, because they are aware children cannot handle it. As, and often people think, well, that's how God is with us, that often we can't handle painful stuff. Well, it's not that much about painful stuff. Because people, when bad news comes, people learn to cope with it. The human mind is capable of adapting to a lot of stuff. So that's not the problem. The issue is most people, including believers, were not delivered yet. They hold on to their own understanding. They hold on to their own thinking. So when, for example, let's say someone, let's say a young girl, a four years old, was killed in a car crash. And an atheist asks, how can a good God allow bad things to happen? First of all, that question, let's analyze it. Why would a good God? So he has already a definition of a good God. And he has a definition of bad. How could a good God let such things happen? 
let happen. So there is blame in that way of thinking also. You, you, you see where, where this is going? So they have a way of thinking and something manifests that's not in line with that way of thinking and they're upset. So now those holes in their way of thinking, they want to close it. So they want answers. Now, get this straight. I've n <laughs> There's nothing against wanting answers considering tragedy in the world. Of, you, it's your right to get answers, but understand this. That question, why would a good God allow bad stuff to happen to blah, 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 you fill in the gaps? It's a dualistic way of thinking. It's a way of thinking that's not in agreement with Christ. It's darkness. So when someone holds on to their holds on to that way of thinking and they have no interest in evaluating and seeing that that way of thinking is darkness what are you going to think what i don't say what are you go what do you think is going to happen what do you think is going to happen if they get answers they're going to process all the answers through the filter of that dark mindset so even if you give them answers, they won't get the answer because the only thing they will get is what is in agreement with that thinking of theirs. And if that thinking of theirs is not in agreement with Christ, then you're giving answers for nothing. You, you get where I'm going with this? So, and if you would give them the answers which they cannot process because their way of thinking is wrong, they're going to become offended. So, to get, to, to, Keep them relieved, you have to give them answers that are in agreement with their dark way of thinking. And that's what often happens in churches and also in the world. People get answers, whether the answers are painful or pleasant, that doesn't matter. They get answers that corresponds to their way of thinking. And that way of thinking is not in agreement with Christ. So, those answers... Are they from God? Are they from the Holy Spirit? Are they from the Messiah? No, they're not. Those are answers. Even though those answers may be factual, those answers will have facts in them that are true. And it's those facts that will convince you that the answer is legitimate. Those answers come from seducing spirits that want to keep you away from the knowledge of Christ. So look, I don't know where you are in your life at the moment. I don't know what you're faking, whether it's a divorce or whether your fiance just broke the engagement and ran away with someone else, or maybe you just lost your job, or maybe you have a, a child of yours is sick. I don't know what you're facing at this moment. I don't. Just understand this. The answer that should be sufficient for you at all times is found in the word for you as a believer you know that all things work together for the good of those who love god and are called according to his purpose and you also have the promises of of god in the scripture that you can agree that you should operate in so that you will operate in the supernatural and here's the thing the supernatural is not rule based in a sense like okay let me say like this when you operate in supernatural, of course, for you, the human, there are limitations because you're not God. Of course you are. But the supernatural is not bound by that dualistic way of thinking that people tend to hold on to. Do you get what I'm saying? So when you operate in a supernatural, you operate in trust that no matter what's going on, it all works out well, that it all has its purpose. But a lot of people don't want to go there. A lot of people want to be relieved and validated. But the validation you're looking for is validation for that way of thinking that does not agree with Christ. But they cannot see that their way of thinking is darkness. They can't. So when God withholds answers from you of a specific situation, look, he has already given you his promises. He has already given you the bigger picture of how human history will end in the book of Revelation, also in the prophecies. So that should be sufficient for you. And yes, there are going to be circumstances that you are not going to understand. 
God, there are going to be painful moments. There are going to be sad moments. All of that's going to, to, to occur. And often you will want an answer, but you won't get it at that moment. Why? Because you, because if you would get an answer, it would trap you. That's why God was withholding the answer from you. He's not withholding answers because you failed or because you have sinned or whatever. It's not, it has nothing to do with that. And here's the thing, when you are operating in a mindset that's not in agreement with Christ, the answers, even if the answer would come, it would be hindered because you would process everything to that way of thinking. That is a hindrance to the answer. For example, in scripture it's written to married couples that, especially to men, that they have to be on good terms with their wives so that their prayers aren't hindered. Why is this written there? Because when you are in strife with your spouse, that's bringing contention. That's bringing happiness to the mind. And when you have happiness in your mind, you cannot process things clearly. This is even scientifically proven. A climate of contention not only affects your body and your brain, but affects your mind also. So if you have a contention in your house, well, your prayers are hindered. Why? Because you have darkness over there. So that's why it's important to look at the, the bigger picture, to have a wider perspective on things. Now I'm going to close this recording now. Before I close, let me tell you, I've had mo I, I had moments, I've been there, that I wanted answers. And man, when I was praying and fasting and, and knocking on God's door to get answers, man, I wouldn't go away. I would keep on knocking, banging, even hitting the door till I get the answers. That's how I was. That's how I still am. I don't easily give up. Absolutely not. And you know what? Just like that Syrophoenician woman in Scripture, no, in the New Testament, she had a daughter that was demon-possessed and she wanted she sought help with Christ. Christ walked away. That woman kept following him. The disciples became upset. They told Jesus, send that woman away. She's, she's embarrassing us. Jesus gave her some answers that appeared to be uh, insulting and yeah, it appeared to be a refusal. But the woman kept persisting and the woman called him Lord. When Jesus said it's not good to give the bread as men for the children and give it to the dogs, the woman said, even dogs have to eat of the crumbs that fall off the table of their masters. So what the woman was saying is, hey, Lord. He, said, he was saying, Jesus, you are the Lord. And yes, even if I'm unclean, even if I'm a dog, if, if I'm low, even the low ones depend upon the Lord of the house, don't they? So the woman didn't even care about pride and how other people would think of her. She humbled herself. That's why Jesus did not give her answers. The answers, so-called answers Jesus gave her, were meant to develop her, were meant to get her out of that dark way of thinking. Because in the beginning, that woman was only focused on the need, upon the ex an extern external relief. Now, after she kept on following Christ and keep harassing him for an answer, she developed, she began to see him as Lord. She began to realize, hold on a minute, I shouldn't compare myself with others, even if I'm considered unclean and a dog in the sight of, of society, who cares? I mean, it's the Lord that matters. She developed great faith. Jesus walked away from her. Why did he walk away from her? Not because he rejected her, because he wanted her to come after him. And the same the Lord is doing with you. Well, that being said, be at peace.